Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us through the break. T squared in Elamite. Hey. <laughs> Elamite. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm trolling him because he was supposed to open it up. You were supposed to open up the show just now. Really? I thought oh, that's what okay, we talked yeah. about. That's all right. You got this. I got it, guys. Don't worry. I got it. And we're going to get the next round of games going on. It's going to be Daddy's Little Darling taking on Carnage. And if we see any other, you know, high caliber players like we did see from Velvet Gaming, we are in for some really interesting rounds way earlier than I thought we were. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed by a lot of these players we're seeing. You're watching their screens, you take away the names, take away the pictures, and you look at these guys like, hey, these guys are making great plays. Their shot is insane. Uh, their map movement is on point. Like, they are really good players capable of upsetting some of these teams here. I just want to say that I also have these symbols in pins, but I didn't wear my pins, so I'm a little disappointed that the one time I don't decide to wear my pins that I got from Jinx, we are not using them, or we are using them. So either way, the players are going to start up a warm-up game. They're going to run some tests, and I see a hypotonic sighting as well, too. So it's going to be interesting to see with players on this team. And one of the great things that... I love about these events, Kyle, I'm sure everyone does, is finally putting a face with the name. Right, and some of these matches here have not been the closest ones we've seen so far, but just like yesterday in the free-for-all, these teams, it's just going to get more and more intense in some of these later rounds, and with what we're seeing from some of these teams here, and I was watching some of the teams play on the off stations as well, and there are some really good matches, and I cannot even predict, you know, who is the best open circuit team here right now. It's very difficult because you have everybody that came out on the legendary bracket, and we already know those teams. But do those players and teams that are unknown have a slight little bit of an X factor or an advantage because nobody knows them, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, and even some of these teams where players have taken breaks and come back, you take a look at Arcanum and Fear Itself, who are playing really well uh, and a capable of making a statement here themselves and even making a run to try to make it into the HCS. Yeah, I'm always curious to see what the strategy is in terms of, you know, Fear Itself saying that he took a step back and is just playing kind of casually when you have players that have grinded the game in Halo 5 and really understand it. You know, there's no, there's no doubt that Jake and Justin, Fear, and Arcanum understand the game. And they have so much previous Halo experience dating all the way back to Halo 2 that sometimes maybe they can just sit back and, and kind of take care of their bodies, take care of their mind, you know, and, and um, come out here very refreshed and that could be the environment that they need to go and play their best. Yeah, I mean, some of these times, in order to compete at the highest level, it is extremely draining. You know, we saw even the likes of Nated take a, you know, a step back here from competitive play, uh, and now joined up with Luminosity when he kind of stepped back away from Optic Gaming, uh, formerly LOL here now, too. It's about a two-month break or so. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of time. Of course, he was still grinding the game and playing, but then you minus or subtract that additional stress factor and, you know, considering you need to come out and perform. And, you know, if you don't make it to finals or if you don't uh, have a great weekend here, and that happens sometimes, you know, you can wake up. You, you know, we've had examples of tournaments where, you know, somebody gets food poisoning, somebody uh, gets sick on the way back, um, you know, can't sleep one night, whatever it is. It's such a mental game every single one of these You can't stress factor. yourself out is right. the number one thing, is you have to come out here and just have fun. That's, that's the whole point, right? Everyone plays video games, everyone plays Halo. Why? Because they love the game and they love to have fun. So, you know, don't let the moment become bigger than it really is. Just go out here and just have a good time and good things will necessarily happen. So you see the players are calling out and, you know, they're twirling their thumbs. They are not playing for real right now. Again, that was just a little bit of a warm up. They want to test their sound settings, make sure that their Astros are good, make sure that their controller settings are okay as well. And then we're going to be getting this one underway. Game type, same as before too. Yeah, Blossom Strongholds game one. Truth Slayer, and that Truth Slayer we were watching last series was pretty ridiculous there. Like you said, I think 18 or 19 to one before that first kill popped up on the board there. So uh, although they were able to kind of maintain trades going forward, uh, you know, maintain that same uh, margin that they had, it wasn't, uh, they just was amazing how they were able to start off that game. I haven't seen a start to that game uh, started a game like that in a really long time. I mean, you'll see, you know, sometimes 20 to 5, 20 to 10, 20 to 3 maybe. To go up, you know, virtually 20 to 0, 
is phenomenal. I think, uh, and I was actually talking to uh, Lunchbox ab about this as well. I think the last time we saw one this bad, of course, in the Pro League, Tom, we had a couple 13 zeros, maybe even a 15 zero. Evil Geniuses was a part of that, right? Right. The PAX tournament, though, was also Evil Geniuses, and they had a, I think it was Coliseum 20, Slayer, right? 22 to zero lead over LOL. I remember seeing that one. That was just hard to watch because you could feel for the guys and you get trapped on the spawns and you know you, there's nothing you can do when you don't have any of the weapons in your hands and the other team is executing really well i mean the best thing that you can do is just try to get a perfect rate when you get off spawn or something like that but other than that you're pretty much sprinting and just trying to find a way to get to a position where you can actually fight yeah i mean it, and at that point and i think you brought this up as well when you're down by that much uh, while she was talking about it you need to try to catch fire again get back into it get your mind right going into the next game and one of the things that you need to do when you're down by that much is just make sure you get a kill because you don't want to end the game goose not at all you don't want to end up the goose and be loose but the players are again they're just changing a couple settings here changing their service tags around getting ready to start this one up and again it will be plaza on stronghold same game types as we saw before it's not a veto system it is a set preset five game types double elimination bracket Old school, I like it. All right, now it does look like we are getting set up in the real game one here now. Like we said, Plaza Strongholds, 100 points to win. R3 Strongholds on this map with that camo spawning top center here. Tom, you're always a fan of those opening strategies, so we'll find out who exactly is going to win that one here off the rip as we see Hypnot or Hypotonic. Hypotonic. Okay, Hypotonic there immediately. This guy's good, by the way. Yeah, and he gets a few shots down. Actually picks up a perfect kill, but that's going to be a trade as he takes some damage from a nade. Looks like the rest of uh, Carnage here elects to go for a yard as opposed to pushing on top center. And I also do believe that that camo was, in fact, burnt here, so that is going to be a, a big deal going forward. That's going to be a very early camo. Yeah, when I see all of the players on Carnage, it starts to remind me now I have seen these guys play before, and I'd have to say that they are the favorites, in my opinion, to win these, this series. So we'll find out if Daddy's little darling can do what they need to do to bring it back and try to win this series. But look at that, a trouble cap to start for Carnage. Shotgun's in the hands of Callus. He's looking for some blood over there in the loop area, but smartly backs off because as you can see, two players were on his radar. So he wants to try to get rid of that barrel and he does avoiding some grenades over here towards the light rifle, takes down his shields, but busts out the shotgun and lays down some serious hurting. Three players dead now on the side of Daddy's Little Darling. Yeah, and looks like they elect to go back for another triple cap, so they will be able to secure yard here, but they need to be careful because all those spawners are going to be over here by bottom side lift and hotel spawn as you see two players fly across towards that nest area. Now, Kallus was in a perfect position with the spawners over there towards the back wall because he had the light rifle, but he was just a little bit too late staring at where his teammates were already at instead of being aware that they were all going to come back at the hotel area. Now, Hypotonic, if he wants the shotgun, it's sitting right in front of him, but it looks like he's just a little bit worried about giving up his angle and his positioning. Yeah, and it looks like he just jumps right over it. I still don't know if he has seen that on the ground, and that's something uh, I'm seeing a lot lately out of some of these players. Is they just do not see these weapons on the ground sometimes, though, and that can be a big, big factor. If someone else here uh, runs out of the base and finds that shotgun, completely change the course of the game. It looked like he was electing to just have the storm rifle instead, honestly. And it's not, you know, it, there's nothing to say to back up that, you know, be like, unless Hypotonic just has the most godly storm rifle that we have yet to see in the tournament so far. But that's right, Kyle. That's the type of stuff that you need to pick up, especially in these later rounds. You can't pass up free weapons on the map. Yeah, I mean, that shotgun, we've seen... Uh, players put that to a uh, very good use, especially likes of Rami, who's also here at this event, and, and some other clips that we've seen with that shotgun. I mean, you can do ridiculous things. Two players in front of you, you run through that shotgun, two shots, two kills. You can kill both players before they can. their kill rate can even take you out. And it seems kind of weird that we're talking about a shotgun being left on the map when the score is 63 to 0 currently, but we're just trying to pinpoint any mistakes coming out from the side of Carnage, and there hasn't been many. Finally, we're seeing a good play coming out from DLD. Let's try to retake bottom center here. Can they take it? No, they can't. The reset comes in for Carnage, and they are yet to score a point, possibly over here towards the nest area. But you do see two players do drop, and now it is up to Spanker Rocket to get the nest, and he can't. Unfortunate, unfortunate turn of events for him. And yeah, this one's starting to get away from them really quickly here as old school, or old school skills? 
old school skills. Well, oh, gotcha. As he runs out, and you even see a barrel kill there in the kill feed. That is not going to be what you want to happen if you're blue team right now, as they are already Carnage here collapsing back in on yard. Players are going to be spawning over towards blue. As you can see in the kill feed, three people get taken out. And once again, another triple cap. Tom, I think we're going to be looking at 100 out here. I want to know what kind of gum this guy's chewing, because he seems like he's enjoying that gum a lot, and it's making him play pretty good, too. Maybe it's got some gaming gum. Yeah, I mean, that's a very fast rate of chewing that we're looking at right chewing now. so fast. <laughs> but either way, 93 to 0. And of course, with the triple cap, that time is going to accumulate just that much quicker here. Now, I think everyone has a kill here on blue team. But like we said, that is going to be a 100-0 victory coming wow. out of Carnage. Very impressive performance. That was domination if I've ever seen it. And as soon as I saw the names, I saw, oh, Carnage, I recognize these guys. They are a good underrated squad, and they are proving it here. 100 to 0 to start as we take a look at the stats here shortly. Or is that a goose? No, I don't think we have oh, a goose. No, no goose is here. Almost. Two kills. Gotcha here. All right. So, yeah, and then you have Sean. Now, which one is Sean? I'm not sure, but Sean got a lot of kills and yeah. not that many deaths. And that was a four minute, 21 second game. So we thought the previous Strongholds Plaza was fast, five minutes and 35 seconds. That one was an entire minute shorter. As we take a look at the damage, only 273 damage, unfortunately, for one of the players on the blue squad. But overall, I mean, <laughs> what can you do if you are DLD trying to move forward here? Yeah, I mean, you really got to get refocused. That one obviously got away from them very quickly, but you can see these players right now. They are talking to each other, trying to strategize what went wrong in that game. Now, they need to be very careful because that game's over. We're going into game two. It's just true Slayer. They need to make sure they're focusing their time, this short few minutes they have right. in between, to focus on what's going to happen this well, time. Well, one of the things also, though, Kyle, too, to keep in mind is, you're right, you do have to reset and refresh the page and get ready for game number two. But... It's double elimination. So if they have Strongholds Plaza later on, or just as a team, you know, for the rest of their foreseeable future, dealing with these issues right after the game while they're fresh in your head isn't the worst case scenario. But you have to spend half of your time talking about that and then half of your time talking about what you're going to do in this upcoming game, which is Truth Slayer. Yeah, I mean, and like we said right before that Plaza Strongholds, we saw a ridiculous Truth Slayer game already. So it's going to be a lot of or not a lot of pressure, but it's going to be you know up to Carnage. See if they can come back and kind of repeat what we saw there in that earlier series. They already won that Plaza Strongholds by a larger margin of victory, of course, than we saw in the previous match. And you know, if anything, uh, if it speaks to history, might be seeing another quick 3-0 this series. So DLD really needs to get it together here now. Yeah, again, this is the early rounds, so sometimes you may see a little bit of a mismatch here, but. Also, what you're seeing are the teams that really want to impose their will and really just make a name and make a statement for themselves because most of these guys, they haven't been just playing, playing Halo since Halo 5. Some of them have been playing since Halo 2, Halo 3. I remember sitting down with Hypotonic and asking him about his you know, Halo history, and the guy has been grinding, waiting for this moment for quite some time now. And to come out here and to perform, you don't realize you spend hours, days, weeks, months preparing just for this moment. Yeah, I mean, and we even talked about this before. What can happen at an actual event? So besides practicing for that event, you need to be making sure your mindset is correct. You're making sure that you're fully prepared, have everything you need. You're eating, taking care of yourself. So much of that plays a factor in your mental game. It's a good start, at least burning the camouflage on the side of Daddy's Little Darlings. That was Spanker Rocket. But let's take a look at what's going on on the Carnage side. Two kills already. Possible Fuel Rod going in the hands of Kallus as well. Doesn't connect on that one, but at least calls him out for his teammate to clean up the kill bottom car. And this is not a good start again for DLD. They did burn the camo, but now weapons, kills, and map control in favor of Carnage. Yeah, and looks like that player over here towards red base will not have a chance of escaping as he quickly got collapsed on. A fuel rod player locking down red two. It's going to be preventing anyone from spawning over here as he gets eyes on a player hiding car one. It's going to put everyone from the opposing team over towards blue and car side. As you see, two of his teammates are now over towards blue side, which means all four people are going to be at car in that kill feed. Two people get taken out. So now Callus needs to be watching out for those spawners as they could. Uh, a lot of this map is being blocked. What is going on right now, Kyle? 
This is a 9-0. Like we said, uh, can they break the 19-0 start that we saw last game? It's going to be a big question here. He's got three shots left in this fuel rod. Misses the shots, and no, he will be taken out. So that's going to put now uh, DLD on the board here as we're looking at 10 to 1 score. I feel like we're looking at a competition of who can come out and have the best start in Truth Slayer because it was 19 to 1 in the previous game, and look at this 12 to 1. And again, map control and power weapons in the hands of Carnage. So many weapons that he doesn't even know what to do with them, so he's just going to elect to waste that. And it hits over <laughs> towards Top Car. It's just one <laughs> of those games for Carnage. <laughs> he got a two for one by accident. And then he goes. Well, not by accident. He actually lined that, that up. Was yeah, actually, that's a pretty skillful shot that he did. Uh, it must be getting some calls from his teammates. Hey, guys, they're hiding up towards car two. And then those make a good play. That fuel rod, lots of times, one shot is not going to be enough to take a player out unless you have that direct hit. As you saw, it's much safer to have two, three, even four shots uh, or bullets left in that weapon before you challenge a player in a 1v1 fight. Just with thrust, with uh, jumping, the way you're able to escape. They can do all of that and, and dodge some of those shots from the fuel rod. I'm curious to see what the communication is like right now on the side of Carnage. So if we can get an Astro listen in, I want to get one going for the Red Squad. Copy. I'm with you on Red. I'm with you on Red Car. I'm with you on Red Car, Sean. Red on the car. car pocket. I'm waiting. I just one shot. One shot. I'm here. I'll get it. I'll get, right, get it. Get it. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Nice. I've got to get out of this base, yo. Guys, I'll right, copy, copy. Yo, street, guys, I'll be one, 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 I, I fell Red down. Two, I'm Make, looking, I'm looking. Red sure. 2, one shot. I got right. Red 2, one shot. I lost word on my axe. I don't see anybody. 2 red 2, 2 red 2. I lost word there, Abe. I lost word there. Yeah, I'm staying alive. Yo, I'm rotating to you, Abe. Wait, Stay okay, alive. no, Laz, you do I that. Know. I got a carbine. I'm going on you. Abe, you're P1, Abe, you're base. You're base. Two of them there. I'm backing off. I'm trying got to shots, they got shots. They got shots. They all four out. Right. Staying alive. I don't need to do that. Thing. They're basement. Watch basement. Yo, they're going to split blue bubble. Their basement's dead. I'm pushing in. They got me. I lost B, guys. Last, fill that. Two retreat, two retreat, two retreat. Let Eli one shot. Go Ready, Eli. Watch the car spawns as well, guys. 30 seconds for camera. Yeah, bottom seconds. red, absolute with sword. He's on the toilet. Yeah, still there. I'm watching car. Car two weak. Car two copy. Car two I'm with you. Oh, my, my, my P3, guys. My P3 now. Top mid, top mid, guys. Top mid. P3 also MP2. Two guys top middle. Top mid, absolute. Top mid, top mid, top mid, top mid, top mid, Pink one, pink one. Dead, dead. Top mid. Top mid. Three, four, three. I'm going for it, Sean. I'm with you. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Their basement. Their basement. They're all four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put bubble to B. I got red, I got blue, I got blue. I'm blue. I'm blue. Slide. Red street, red street right now to P2. Holy, I'm Two of them, last two of them. I got one of them. One more guy here is that show. Nice job. Here you go. Sean, stay P. We have the T. We have the T. We have the T. I got a camel though, guys. P2 again, yo. P2 again. P2 again. I'll finish him. I'll finish him. P2 again. Yep. I'm running you, Abe. I'm running you. I'm running you. I'm running you. I got the Ryan's belt. Car 2, I shot. Top car, I'll throw car. I'll throw car. I'm rotating the red with camo. Uh, wait. Last, can you go P? You're alone. Hold on. No, no. I'm holding you. blocking blue. It's blocking blue. I'm blocking blue. I'm blocking blue. Too dead, too dead. Hey, Han, take my. Oh, no, you're good. Red window, red window. Red basement or red window. I'm about to die, guys. I need help. I'm your pair. I'm your pair. Red bubble and there you hear the comms coming out from Carnage. You even have the coach giving a second by second time of when that camouflage is coming up. So these guys, they have a little bit of dead space in the comms, but that's just because of the fact that these guys are trying to slow play on the side of DLD and trying to sit inside of the bases, but they're just getting collapsed on so heavily by Carnage, 45 to nine. Yeah, and old school skills. I don't know if he's died yet this game. So it's gonna be interesting to see. He was killing Frenzy. We saw the running riot. How many kills is he gonna be able to accumulate this game? Gets the wingman. I don't know, Is he? does he have enough to potentially get the perfection? There's the rampage, he does have enough. So if he can stay alive here, we're gonna stay on board with old school skills the rest of this time and see if he can make it happen. It's like yeah. the perfect game. And then he just finds a fuel rod down right in front of him. So he's going to get a lot more ammo here. And he's playing this pretty well. Uh, he's just listening to his teammates. He knows there's players over towards me too. He, we know he's not afraid to waste these shots here. Getting that double assist car two earlier here with that weapon. So he did hit 20 kills. He is 20 and 0, Tom. He did oh, not oh die my. this game. Hold Amazing up. performance coming out of old school, old school skills here. 
we are going to have to get the stat page up ASAP because he has the perfection medal that was up there. And it just went away. You guys missed it. But there you can see the stats 25 and 0. Meanwhile, I think we do have a goose on the other side as well. T 20 and 0 here we're looking at. 25 there. and 0. Oh, 25. Don't get, don't, get out of, don't get out of control. Don't get out of hand. It's like, whoa, that would have been insane there. Rack up 50% of your team's kills without dying. Uh, and, of course, look at that damage here. 1,862 damage. By far the most in the game. Uh, clearly, this team came off to a hot start. Wasn't really able to get... Uh, you know, DLD was not able to get back into it. And what a performance that we just saw. That was the first perfection I've seen this weekend. That is amazing. That's the first perfection I've seen in quite a long time, especially in tournament play. And look at the other guys on DLD. They're just all laughs over there. There's nothing that they can do. Before, they were trying to figure out what the strategy was going to be on Plaza Strongholds. Now they're just like, all right, guys, let's just try to get a capture here in Coliseum CTF. Yeah, and as you see it here, already a 2-0 lead very quickly coming out for the side of Carnage. So when you see two teams like this, the last series, this series matching up and having that dominating performances, it's going to be really cool to see when those two teams go head to head. Yeah, I can't wait to see these ladder rounds here. Again, I feel like round three is when everything really starts to kick off and then round four is going to be possibly upset central. Do you remember a Toronto event? I want to say it's 06 or 07, but I remember there were a lot, I think it was Halo 2, a lot of 50 to zeros uh, in the open bracket play. And I think we even had one. Although I think we may have had a 50 to that. zero, possibly. Right. Um, I do remember that event though, and that was the first time that there has been a major Halo tournament in Canada. And it was awesome to see all of the Canadian support come out there um, as well because that's one of the best things is like even though these guys lost 50 to 11, it's an experience, right? When do you ever have someone go 20 and 0 against you? That is just an insane level of our, our display of skill that mm -hmm. just came out from old school skills. So that's just fun to be a part of, right? It, it's something that you take and you look up to it. You're like, hey, I want to get better now. I, I thought that I could come in here and do well, but this is something that I can look forward to to possibly be that good. Right, and I don't exactly remember my first time playing on a main stage, but I know uh, I'm sure I was nervous going into it, and these guys, they have that opportunity to come out here, play on the main stage of Millennial Esports here in Vegas. So they need to make sure at this point now, of course, those were two kind of blowout games, but they just need to make sure they have a good time. Looks like they are laughs here now. Just go out there, go for some ridiculous things, try to ninja one of these guys or something, and then you walk away happy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe you just... It's Coliseum CTF, camp in the back of your base to start the game, bait all of your teammates, they're all going to die, you're sitting in the back of the base ready to get a kill. Do you remember Make It Rain? I remember when I was on the agency, we go against Neighbor and Boo, SK, and the beginning strategy on Warlock CTF, was they, all, in the grenades. they all and drop they down to their grenades, right? Yeah. And then worst boosted, strategy ever. Worst of all time. Shout out to Neighbor from 343 for that one. But either way, we are going into a game number three, CTF on Coliseum. And like we said, if it's anything like the first two games we saw, this one might be a quick one. And if Old School Skills has anything to say about it, coming off that perfection. See if he dies this game. He might have only had like three or four deaths this entire series. Yeah, probably three. That's my guess. So we'll see what Old School Skills does right from the get-go. Making his way over towards the snipe. Does Whoa. not get to melee Whoa. out of that player. Whoa. All right. All right. Let's just move Let's just uh, I'll switch over there. Yeah. And as we see, a couple kills coming out. There's going to be all four members dead here. For DL, or no, not for DLD. No, DLD got yeah, DLD all four down. DLD got all four down. And now they racked up a couple more kills. What? So they were actually just playing with us the entire time. DLD the is playing possum, right and they are ready for the reverse sweep, guys. Yeah, they just go ahead and pass up on the first two swings, going for that reverse sweep, and that's the strategy all along. Just give the other team to uh, overconfidence. <laughs> Definitely. So. There it is. We'll see if they can get the flag out and pulled over here. Kallus off the spawn. Does he have the return, though, is the question. And yes, they do. Carnage able to get that return. DLD not able to get their cap. Yeah, and DLD, I think they already have as many kills as they had last game here. Only a minute into this one. So obviously, them having some laughs, shaking hands, just wiping, uh, you know, just forgetting about those first two games. They're a completely different team this time around. Here it is, though, the flank coming in. I'd probably pull the flag right after those shots, though, so I really like this play, and 
That is the right play here. Where is he going to bring it, though? It looks like scatter shot area. I don't know about bringing it all the way up here to get the angle. I mean, I guess so. That can work if, if you want it to, but looks like he's trying to lay down shots as he's running it, too. So interesting strategy coming out from Callus. Looks like it's going to pay off, though. Three players dead, all dropping by carbines, interestingly enough. Yeah, and it looks like the last member is moving over towards Red Fountain, so that flag will be returned. Looks like nobody's going to be able to get over there in time, as you see that last player over here on Fountain, like we mentioned, and that is going to be one capture. You see three members of Carnage still in their base, going to be able to play defense as they grab one kill. That may be a numbers advantage temporarily, but DLD flying into the base, get that flag pull. Now, it is at least two dead. Cypher on the flag, he needs to hit this headshot. Uh, Cortelian here has a pretty good splinter nade and is able to grab that flag. This is going to be two dead here now for Carnage. And they are starting to move it across the map pretty slowly, but still making some progress. Yeah, let's give some more love to the DLD side because they have their chance on the main stage here. Down obviously 2-0 to zero in the series, 1-0 to zero in this game. And the pressure is so, so crazy from Carnage right now. Nobody is going to stay alive in this DLD base. Everybody collapsing from different angles, just as they should. And now just everybody spawning in that little filter area, getting rocketed to at the same time. This is definitely going to be a cap. Yeah, it looks like they have some map control. They have the weapons in their hands. Flag's already being moved across. You can see in that kill feed, at least three people have been taken out since this flag has been pulled. Now they will be coming off respawn. So if they get lucky, might be able to slow this one down or prevent a 2-0 lead for Carnage. But it looks like it's not going to be the case. That one also gets put in. That new sniper rifle looks like it was up top. We could switch over to the sniper rifle player. Here we are. It is in the hands of DLD as he pushes in, grabs a kill there. Has a body, make oh. that a double. And look, a suicide here coming out of one of the members of Carnage. If he's able oh. to take out this last player alive, they could be looking at a flagpole. Unfortunate for Spanker Rocket, and he's doing the right decision to try to stay alive, but gets hunted down by a player on Carnage. Not sure who that was, but we do have Hypotonic over here with the scatter shot in the scatter shot area. Lex to keep his pistol out, even though these players are all around him. And look at that awesome double kill coming out from Hypo. Now look at, he also has the rocket sitting there on the street if he wants him, and two left in the chamber with a teammate press, pressed up pretty far and another one over his snipe. We could possibly see another cap here. Yeah, new rocket spawning right as you find the old rockets. Pretty nice position to be in. He will be able to grab this ammo, and it looks like you know, one interesting thing, it really looks like DLD has maintained control of Snipe Tower for the majority of this game, but it's just not working out in their favor as these rockets have been in the hands of Carnage the entire time. And you also have Sniper in the hands of the man that just went 20 in zero as this final possible flag is being pulled on the side of Carnage. Can he hit the no scope? No, switches on over to the BR and doesn't find it. Meanwhile, you do have the flag being pulled and it is pretty far. Here you can see the flag has been pulled though on the side of DLD. Flag at home to score, obviously, so they need to get the return before they can try to end this game. Big 1v1 coming in, and also Rockets flying in, too, so looks like this flag, is it going to be returned? No, that flag's very close, but unfortunately not able to do so, and there it is. I think the return's coming in, and this game is all but over. Nice job by DLD, though, keeping that one a little bit closer than the other two. Yeah, I mean, actually, that one was, like, worlds closer than the other two. Even though it was a 3-0 based on the score there, the kills were... In they were not that heavily outslayed. And of course, we'll take a look at the stats here momentarily. But they had a lot of flag pulls. They were trying to do some flag standoffs. It just the weapons were not going in their favor. And that last snipe shot obviously being extremely crucial here to that flag return. And we do have a 3-0 CTF Coliseum as well as a 3-0 in this series. And Carnage is going to advance. Yeah, I think the slays were somewhere around like 35 to 27 in favor of Carnage, so not even close to what we saw in that Truth Slayer game, which was, what, 50 to 11. 11. So that game, definitely the closest game of the series. Yeah, and, and like we said, old school skills, uh, you know, his deaths, he tripled his deaths this game based off of the first two and how those went, and 20 and 0. That's got to be something you're happy with uh, moving forward into the rest of this tournament, knowing that you you're, have that capability and that skill level in order to do something like that. And now uh, you, even the flag pulls. So we saw a couple flag returns coming out of DLD, which is a lot different than we saw in the Strongholds game where they almost captured a couple Strongholds, but were really not even that close. They never were in a position to really even put a point on the board rather than just capture one Stronghold. All right, well, we do have some highlights from that game. So let's roll that footage and see who it was and who else besides old school skills who 
We were on board with him for quite some time, and rightfully so. I mean, he was alive 95%. 100%. Well, 95% of that game. 100% oh, of right. this game. Here. Yeah, gotcha there. All right, and we do have the fuel rod here, some plays. Of course, that was that cross map shot and two assists picked up. Uh, so I don't know exactly how weak it took those players, but obviously did some damage, as you could hear the assist sound popping up once those players were taken out. Yeah, and old school skills. Maybe he has to work on his CTF Coliseum game because he had infinite the amount of deaths that he did <laughs> in the Truth Slayer game. So you going to have to talk to him about that one and see what's going on. But a Rampage 20 and 0 on the main stage, that has to feel good. That's, that's like... Life goals, man. Life goals. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had, you know, in Pro League, we had Pistola go on the rampage to end at game five against the, and the game was, like you said, it ended. He still could have went on with a bigger spree. You're right, yeah. I mean, he was in everything. Some of those, I remember specifically that snipe, that no scope that he had on, I believe it was blue flag on a player running up towards elbow challenging him. When you catch fire like that, like we saw old school skills do it here this game, you can do amazing things like that. I got to say, I was so impressed with the way that these guys were rotating around the map, though. Uh, their communication, yeah, it was solid. They're going to have to step it up a little bit more, and I think be a little bit aware that they had some dead space in their communication. Just a little bit more small talk. Um, and that's something we saw Velvet Gaming doing really well, and just reminding each other um, what to do. Hey, guys, we need to do this a little bit better. Hey, guys, we need to do that better. But overall, I mean, there's not much to say that what they could improve on, really, because they were on top of everything, and they didn't even have to communicate it, too, which is a great thing to be on that same, that big of a, you know, but that big of a series, that big of a stage, and you're on the same page and you don't even have to communicate it to one another. Right, and of course, we do have an interview here down on the floor with a member of Carnage, so we'll go ahead and hear from them. Thanks, Elamite. Yeah, I'm here with Old School, who just went 20 in zero, a perfection. The first we've seen this event on Truth Team Slayer. Give it up for this man. So. Playing on Truth TS, I mean, what is your team's strategy? It just seemed like you were just running around, not able like, to just be killed at all, staying alive at the right times, just kind of dipsy-doodling everywhere. What, I guess, what's your strategy playing on that game type? Well, our strategy is when, whenever we get the right slays and we get control of map positions, we tend to hold those positions. For example, we had P2, we had red base, blue base, controlling the spawns where they only spawn car. And then whenever we see the oppor opportune moment, we go ahead and rotate out of a base, reaccomplish car side, and then start spawn trapping them in the base. So it's just adapting to the scenario. And also, like, I wouldn't have been, been able to pull off a perfection if it wasn't for my team. You know, we're all doing our roles, our jobs, and everything we needed to. And um, we executed perfectly. It sounds like you guys are going to go far, and you understand that it's not just one man to do it all. It takes a full four-man team to, to be successful. Uh, so you told me you played at Orange County, and now you're playing here. What did you learn from Orange County coming into this event? Orange County, uh, that was probably my first time on main stage. Had a lot of anxiety just because I don't, this is like my first time really getting into the scene. Been playing since Halo 1. And uh, a lot of it was like internal struggles, internal struggles like as in like, man, you know, can I perform in this environment? Am I as really good as I think I am? Um, a, a lot of mental barriers during that tournament and I feel like I've grown out of it just because it's, uh, it's just an internal battle. Like if, if you're trying to conquer anything on an external level, you gotta do it first internally. And so that's what I learned from my Orange County event. Awesome, man. Well, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more from you for the rest of the event. Well, guys, we're going to have another match coming up soon. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 